So, Keith, it's been a while since you've been on the Hammer Nation's couch. It's nice Amen. to see you. I mean, I've really missed that part of myself. You are, you complete me. <laughs> Thank you very much. I mean, so later yeah, on, guy, later on in the show, the we're guy having. I crashed a Tesla and a couple of things. I, I know, mean, but look I at what we're doing. To the curb. We have local author Danny Swanson. Ah, I saw. I'm going to be on the show a little bit later, so, you know, it, you should read the book. It's a good I book. I saw her come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is she backstage? Yeah, she's backstage. She's waiting. She's not, in the that, green, we are green, like the in, the green, in the green room. Because last time she left, yeah. she had me barking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so what's interesting, Keith, is uh, we, we've had an interesting summer. Weddings have been fabulous. You've been doing a great job at keeping things going. And I tell you, you, you know, we uh, a while back, we shot a, a, a nice little video of Design by Dorset. What to is going on? To it's you and Kendrick, man. That's I like, just follow that's you guys like New York City. That's not even St. Paul. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was very creative yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me. Mm -hmm. I think it was, so thank you for that opportunity. Because oh. um, I think sometimes you get, just last year, we get so bogged down, right. for lack of a better word, and really kind of surviving, trying to get through, right. through it all. And then, uh, so... With that design piece, mm -hmm. we were able to get to, I was able to get back and to get the creative juices flowing. So it wasn't really, I didn't do a lot of aesthetic stuff. Right. Like so in your, in, your, in your design collections coming up, um, you, can, you can check out those designs on, on Instagram, Facebook. But what, he, what Keith is going to do is he's going to design um, every season a wardrobe. And if you like shopping with him, you like the way he styles you, this man is going to have Design by Dorset here yeah. in Henry's Habit Yeah, it was pretty interesting. I, I, yeah. I, I like yeah. it. My, my, what I wanted to do with the first one was just infuse some color, right. some happiness. Right. I heard that that Happy. mustard color really resonated with, yeah, that shirt was yeah. beautiful. Because I think sometimes we have shirts with patterns and, and uh, you know, our foundation is just a wonderful, uh, uh, first of all, great fabric shirt well made right. and just a little pop of color but a solid so, so the, I wanted to know that we, we can kind of do that and still have some fun with so are you going to have some accessories with those for this yeah, winter, yeah uh, this fall? definitely uh, a shoe okay. um, I think you know we kind of uh, have some shoes okay. and just have people kind of find their style with right. little small touches of it find your style is the key phrase here with design by Dorset at Jaime's Haberdashery check it out on Instagram Facebook <laughs> Welcome to another show of the Haberdasher's Couch. We don't have to pay somebody to listen to you. <laughs> Once upon a time, or so the story goes, there was an author named Danny Swanson. And she wrote about a little girl, Isabel, Izzy, Izzy. who had a friend, a protector, orange cat named Zion. Um, no, the orange cat is actually in the other books. The orange cat is in the other book? Yes. That one is a boggle. Oh, a boggle. Yes, and that's what I, and that's where we're going to start off. We have to define what a boggle is. So I am really big into fairy tales, and yeah. I like the origins of them. Because right. people started telling stories to their kids before radio, before TV, and it was to keep their kids in line, right? So mm -hmm. they would they make up stories of the boogeyman. So a boggle is the original word from Scottish fairy tales mm -hmm. for the boogeyman, where okay. it came from. So it went from boggle to bogle right. to boogie. Uh -huh. So that's, that's how the how boogeyman started. I like it. I like it. And so um, Isabel was, uh, was she's like five years old when we were introduced to the story. Yep. Uh, and she, she comes out of another land. And she enters into this new realm, the present realm, via... There's a portal. Portal. Like and Harry Potter. Kind of. I'm yeah. a super Harry Potter fan and yes. Alice in Wonderland. And if you mix the two together, right. that's kind of how my books turn out. And that, that is what, that's the genre of writing, right? It's fantasy, magic, adventure. What, what is the genre? What's it called? Um, young adult fantasy okay. is my main, okay. my main shtick that I write in. Right, right, right. And I, what I, uh, so the, the Smith family adopts her, and um, they go through, Nathan is the brother, brother, right? And they, and he's a nice kid. Super the, the, nice These kid. people are all nice. Like the nicest family yes. you could want to adopt you. Right, right, right. And They're so cool. you spent, you spent uh, the first part of your 
educational career at the University of Minnesota? Yes, sir, I did. Yeah. I am an English lit major. I was going to be a teacher. Right. And that didn't pan out. So I had yeah. to use my English major for something. So it's like punctuation and sitting structure. Yes, yeah. I am not the best English major, <laughs> but I am a great storyteller. Um, you have to surround yourself with good people that are right. have strong skills. So right. I surround myself with people who can correct my grammar for right. me. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I was a theater major and cinematographer film, and I was never a good reader, right? And my punctuation sucked, right? But but I tell you, um, script writing came a little easier to me than actual, because we don't really talk, and when we talk scripts, we don't talk that way. Right. But what I found interesting about your, the way you write, it's very cinematic. This translates very easy into four films. Um, I have huh? been told that before, so yes. if anybody would like to turn my books into a film, my website is dannyswanson.com. Right. <laughs> We need producers, right? We need producers. So then, and then, so uh, from school, you graduate from school. Uh, did you did you find that writing sensibility while you were in school, or did it take place after after the school? And I've always kind of been into writing. So as a kid, even as a kid. Wow. So yeah. back in the day, I want to say I was probably twelve, thirteen. I got really into mythology. Mm -hmm. Um, I started writing like Herculean stories, sure. and you got to remember this is back with like the old floppy disks, right? right? And I was not a typer back then, so I had 26 pages done. Sure, yeah, that was a pretty big deal for me. Absolutely, um, my little brother broke my floppy disk that had the story on it, yeah. so I was a little heartbroken about that. But I've did that, and then I went into poetry for a while. Right. Um, did that in high school and kind of got my flow right. going with that. Did your did your mom have story time with you as a kid? Always. Yeah. Always. My so mom's was a re huge reader. Re oh, she reading books and maybe going to bookstores. All the time. Uh, always being introduced to. Always at the library. The library, right? Always. Stuff like that. Public libraries are awesome. Um, used to do story time and stuff there too when we were little kids. So, so when you started writing, you 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 said you had a concussion. I did. And and then you fell and you would have dreams and you'd wake up and you'd write down everything everything so I'd have these and they were so vivid like I remember waking up one time so my first book the hunt of the grimalkin um she has powers and she is able her main power is fire so she can ignite fire and she's also a healer um and I woke up one day thinking I could light a fireball because I just had these dreams about it right and I seriously woke up and I was going like this mm -hmm. and I was like well that was a really crazy dream right. and there's a sequence in there where she runs into the crow witch mm -hmm. and it starts off with this magical um, music box and it's playing right. this really sweet song uh -huh. and there's this wonderful music and everyone starts to come around and then all of a sudden the music box starts to skip notes sure and then it gets a really like a creepy song going and the smell turns to like sulfury right. rotten so eggs so women women are a big part of your of your story structure yes main focus do you see yourself in those characters um i see myself more in the sidekicks than yeah. the main okay. character okay um you have to write what you know right yep. so absolutely little pieces of me and my friends are in all these mm -hmm. characters. It's really fun. I like to put people I know in the books and wait for them to read it to see if they notice. Sure. And they do. They and call then you, me. And then you pay the royalties. No, because <laughs> I changed their name. So let's, let's talk about. Well, first of all, I think the graphics on these books are. These drawings are. Oh, thank what, you. Where do these come from? They're um, beautiful. I met a lady online on Fiverr. Her name is Anna Rostovovich, and I'm sure. sorry if I butchered your name. Right. She is amazing, mm -hmm. and she's done all four of my covers. And I, so this these are trilogies. This is uh, a trilogy. The first three are a series. Yeah. And the Winding Woods is going to be an anthology, so you guys can read them in any order once they come out. Okay. I am working on a fifth book. Mm -hmm. um, that will be part of the Winding Woods series. Okay, and I'm, I'm just I'm interested. Self publishing. Uh, advantages, disadvantages, and cost. Uh, to doing so. I mean, that's that's a, a courageous thing. So I have a good friend. So when I hit my head, she started writing books. Her name's Shanda Hahn. I'll give her a shout out because she was my inspiration. Um, she is self-published. Mm -hmm. And I went to my boyfriend and I was like, 
Shannon and I used to write stories and stuff together. Right. Do you think I could do this? And he's like, of course you can. I don't know why you're asking mm-hmm. me that. Um, so she taught me how to self-publish. And I self-published through Amazon. It's called Create Space. Mm-hmm. Um, the advantages of it is... I get to control how much my books cost, where I'm going to sell them at. Um, there's two major places that you go. There's also a site called Smashwords, and that sends your books out. Like Barnes & Noble sells my books, right? and that's through Smashwords. Okay. Um, the advantages are like you're more in control of your own stuff, and you don't have someone else telling you what to do. But the disadvantage is also you're more in control of your own stuff, and you don't have anyone telling you what to do. Um, how long does it take to finance a book? If I'm really serious, they say you can write a novel in a month if you write 3,000 words a day Mm -hmm. um, and crank it out. I, you know, I have a full-time job also. I go and visit schools and teach classes with them about writing, so I'm not 100% in front of a computer typing. Mm -hmm. Um, But probably, I probably could crank one out in six months if Mm -hmm. I was really serious about it. What's the expense behind publishing? Um... They're about five dollars a book okay. when you factor in the shipping sure. and stuff, so it's not too bad. Yeah, yeah. So you you maybe publish two hundred copies, three hundred copies. I, I usually buy them about a hundred yep. at a time. Okay. And I drop them off at different stores, right. like the Mind's Eye comic book store has a stack of my books right, right. now. Um, and so I'll get them, and we work out commissions and drop them off. Wonderful. Um, so then w- we can find your books where now? My books are everywhere that eBooks are available. Amazon for sure, my website, dannyswanson.com, and you spell Danny, D-A-N-I. Um, Barnes & Nobles carries them. Libraries have them. Right. Tell me, because I'm intrigued, because I have a cat. I'm a huge cat person. Cat, cats cats are very magical. They move in a magical way, and they, only, they never come when you call them, but they're always present. You don't even know they're there. I have Which a cat. Which is kind of like that acts like a dog. Uh, is 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 it uh, what what is the what is the small orange cat? His name is Fig. Yeah. Um, he goes by Meow for the first couple okay. um, chapters because okay. she doesn't know his name. Okay. Um, but his name is Fig, and he is a fire cat. Okay. And so he has magical abilities too, and he grows into this giant, flaming, mm-hmm. lion-sized cat. Right. But he has normal cat characteristics, right? Nice. Like, Sometimes I'm really scared, but sometimes right. I'm really brave. Um, but he helps her and guides her to where she needs to go because she doesn't know what's going on. I don't need to read these in any order, right? Um, the first series, The Hunt of the Grimalkin, is the first book. And then Lily Quinn and the Grimalkin is the second book. Perfect. And then The Circle of Owls is the third book. Okay. So that's the first series. That's the Grimalkin What have you been series. doing? I, mean, what, I got a stack. What have you been doing with your life? What do you, you know I mean? Look at this. That's that's nice. Oh, thank you it's very much. It's got to make you feel good, and I'm awful proud of you. Oh, thank you. And I think it's wonderful to have a local a local uh, author here at the Haberdashery today. You'll come back thank and see you. us again. I will always come back. Can I do a quick plug for my upcoming events? Yeah, yeah. Sure. I am going to be at the XL Comic Con on September 30th at the Grandstand Building on um, the fairgrounds. Oh, good. So come out and see me. I'll be there. I'll have a stack of books for you guys. I'll sign them. We'll have a good time. Wonderful. Thanks for coming on the Haberdasher's Couch for Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks for joining us.